I'm working on my 2006 F350 and I'm going to be replacing the front wheel bearings on this. It's a two wheel drive, so it is a difference. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we just got to get this popped off here. Let's locate our little notches. And these can really stick. All right, um, now I'm going to be using an impact. Uh, you'll want to break these loose, obviously, before you raise it up and get your jack stands if you don't have the impact. Okay, I'm just using a six sided 13 16 on these right here. Okay, now we just pull this on off of here and slide this out of the way here now. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to see about getting this caliper off here. Um, now normally, I would just take this main bracket here, plate loose, the lower and upper bolts, but this line here is right in my way of getting to it so i'm going to take the caliper off <clears throat> so you could do it that way if you didn't have anything in the way but and another reason um these slides need to be re-greased so i really need to take those off anyways and it's a good idea to you know inspect your pads and stuff while you're at it and these pads look good but these slides definitely need some grease on them so I've got, um, I just got a 5 8 I'm going to use on these. I'm going to take these out and we'll see about getting this off of here. Okay, and that's those bolts that, uh, bolts that just slide on there. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and uh, slip this off at this point. Okay, I'm just gently prying up on this and working this off of here. <clears throat> it usually doesn't take much. Went ahead looped us a wire up here real high that way when I pull this off here I can just take and slip it on there and hang it up okay so I've got a pretty good lip on my calipers and uh, don't have a big enough C clamp to push this thing back with it on here to get this off so um, I'm gonna go ahead and take these bolts back here loose with this caliper loose enough I've got enough room to get back there behind it so I'm going to go ahead and take this um, upper and lower mounting plates 13 16 so I'm going to go ahead and get those out of there and we're just going to take it off as a whole okay and there's those two bolts for that plate and you can see they're pretty good sized bolts so we got it all loose now we can go ahead and pull it off of here and uh, we'll get some slide grease on these as well Okay, actually I still had to use my clamp to push that over because it's, it's got such a big lip you can't really see it there, but it wasn't letting those shoes come off. And my C-clamp wasn't quite wide enough, but I stuck a screwdriver in the center of this slot and just got my C-clamp on that and just enough to push it over a little bit. It didn't take much to do it there. Okay, and there's our caliper up out of the way, finally. Okay, so now we got to get in here to this spindle nut, and we've got a cap on here. And what I found works really well is just a flat bar like this that you'd use for trim. <clears throat> and you just get in there because it's, you know, up in there a good ways, and just work your way around it. And... Uh, you know just work your way all the way around being careful and you won't hurt it any and it should just eventually just pop right off of there just like that so now that we're in here we've got a uh, cotter pin that we need to get out first and then we got that castle cap nut there that'll come off so we'll go ahead and and bend that cotter pin first and get it out Okay, and there's the cotter pin, that little castle nut thing. And if you lose or break yours or something, um, I've seen these at O'Reilly's um, that look awful dang close to these. It looks like they sold like the nut and this piece. So you might try those. Not 100% sure, but it looked pretty close to being the same thing. 
and they also sell these cotter pins and I got some new ones um, you know you don't have to replace it but you know I'm gonna put new ones on mine so now we just got to get that nut right there off and it shouldn't be very tight okay and uh, that nuts gonna be an inch and a sixteenth by the way that's what I'm using and it's six sided and it works just fine okay so there we have the nut and then we just get the washer out of here <clears throat> and uh, that's all we got to hold in that so now we can go ahead and uh, slip this off I'm gonna also get a couple of uh, uh, four by fours over here to set this on and this is kind of where the fun begins okay so we just take it off here and set it down and that's what that looks like of course we'll have to clean all that up <clears throat> now that um, bearing will just fall out the smaller bearing but now we got to get down in here and knock out that race <clears throat> and we'll have to turn it over and do the same thing we got a seal here and uh, we'll knock out that uh, bearing and then we'll knock the race out of this side so we've just got it setting on some uh, four by fours I said there's you can see it when you look down there the bearing race it's just it's got a little lip <clears throat> and we're gonna have to knock that out now um, what I'm using I've, this is just my aluminum cheater bar uh, nothing special and I'm just using a, a rubber mallet and I'm just gonna work around that until I knock it out of there <clears throat> I said I definitely recommend if you uh, don't have a piece of aluminum use aluminum you don't want to use uh, metal because you could damage your inner part here and and also you know um, you could damage you know when we go to putting it back together so um, you know I would recommend getting a piece of aluminum or something it doesn't have to be you know this long but um, I said it, aluminum's not going to hurt the inner surface of this hub and it's not going to hurt anything so anyways I'm going to get my rubber mallet like I said we're just going to I'm going to just work around that and knock that lower one off okay this is the bearing on the, the big bearing on this end I've just popped it out of here uh, actually this um, had to come out because I didn't have enough room to get in there with my bar so I just popped this out I just set it in there like that and just popped it out you can flip it over and knock this seal out from uh, the other side it's not a big deal uh, it's the races that are a little bit more difficult to pop loose so I'm gonna get this off of my cheater bar here now okay here's that smaller race I've just knocked out <clears throat> so I did it just like I said I just uh, worked my cheater bar around it and I took my rubber mallet and just knocked it right out the bottom there okay so with that out we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna get this race here okay and it says it's probably not real easy to see down in there but I'm just taking this bar and you, you can feel it when you get down in there and we just hit that lip all the way around it's kind of got it like that and let's work around I'll move it a little bit move it a little bit and this is not taking long this is taking me like a minute or two to knock these out it's not a big deal okay and there's that bigger race knocked out <clears throat> so now we're just gonna work on cleaning the um, inside of this really good and we're gonna clean that up really good and get ready to put our new bearings <clears throat> and we'll um, We'll be knocking the, the new races back in. I'm gonna use this here too. But we're just gonna get this here cleaned up first. Okay, so we're gonna be working on this um, inner bearing first. It has the race already with the bearing. <clears throat> this is our um, this is our outer race and our outer bearing. 
and then our seal that we're going to be putting on this inner side. So, for the first thing we got to do is just get our race. We've already cleaned this out really well. I'm going to put a um, light bit of grease around this just to make it a little bit smoother going in. You notice the flat, thicker side? That's going to be going down. So the thinner side facing out and then the bearing going in like that. And you kind of see how it goes. So we don't have much to tap on, but it's enough. It's enough to get it done. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm using some. Um, let's see here. This is what I'm using. Heavy duty grease. So it's, a, you know, made for heavy duty trucks and farm equipment and everything so it's a green grease and that's what I'm using to pack the bearings and everything so like I said I'm gonna go ahead and put a thin coat around this race I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using this to knock it back in and I'm really mainly just using this flat portion right here because it's got a little bit more meat to it so um, and I just work around work myself all the way around until we get it fully seated okay so I think I've got that pretty well seated and what I'm gonna do now is flip this whole hub over and check it from the back side with a flashlight just to make sure that there's not a gap so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it over and I'm gonna check that and if it's okay I'm gonna go ahead and put the race in on the other side Okay, so now we're getting ready to put um, this outer race, and again, the thick side is going down onto the lip, thin side facing out, and we're going to take and put a light dab of grease around this, and this one is actually a little bit easier to put in than the other side. Okay, and... So I should also point out that when you're hammering these in, you can tell when it bottoms out. You get that good solid thud. So, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and flip it back over. Um, and we're going to get our um, inner bearing. And we're going to get the, um, the seal on the other side. And we're going to pack this with grease really well before we put it in there <clears throat> and uh, then when we come after we get the seal in then we'll flip it back over and worry about getting the bearing on this side okay and uh, there we've packed a good amount of grease on that and I got a couple of good scoops out of there with my finger and just packed it in there really good here's our seal we got to make sure to put that on um, just nothing fancy I just take and use my hammer and a little piece of a wooden block and just don't hit your seal but just hit this lip around through here because um, I mean I never have the right size piece of pipe or whatever so um, it's a little wooden block and I'm just going to tap that on there okay so I was just using a little wooden block and a hammer for that and again make sure it's recessed fully it's going to set down in there just a little bit Okay, so with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, get this flip back over. And um, I'm also going to clean up around this here a little bit more before I put that back together. But um, the next step, we're just going to flip this back over and uh, get our bearing, our last bearing, in the other side. Okay, I've got some uh, clean grease around where the seal is going to go and just all around the spindle here <clears throat> so I'm just getting ready to set it on uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and pop that bearing in first okay we've just greased that bearing up and popped it in there and now I'm just getting ready to set it on okay uh, <clears throat> once you get that on there you'll kind of push the bearing in and slip that little washer special washer on there and now we're just um, go ahead and get this on here now the manual <clears throat> calls for just 
taking and rotating this while you're tightening and you'll take your torque wrench we're going to set it to uh, somewhere from 20 to 25 foot pounds and that's going to be our first step and we're going to do it while we're rotating it to make sure that we get these bearings uh, seated properly okay so I've seated the inch and sixteenths nut to 20 foot pounds <clears throat> that's like as lowest as my foot pound one goes and now um, what we're going to do is we're going to back this nut off at least a full half a turn or more but don't let your hub pop down all we've done right now is while we were spinning it we just took and tightened it to 20 foot pounds so we're going to go ahead and back it off uh, back it off until it's you know at least it's a full half a turn Okay, <clears throat> now that I've backed that off, this is supposed to be 17 inch pounds. Um, this is a 3 8, so I have to put an adapter on here to get onto my half inch um, socket here that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and get that on there, and we're going to tighten this to 17 inch pounds. Now, if you don't have a uh, inch pound um, torque wrench, this thing is really just finger tight basically I mean 17 inch pounds is nothing it's just finger tight and once the bearings are seated um, it's just supposed to be finger tight and then we get our castle nut and stuff on there so I'm gonna go ahead and get my inch pound torque wrench and I'm gonna just uh, tighten this to 17 inch pounds okay so we have that at 17 inch pounds and if we if we have to to align these will move it but it looks like it's lining up just right for the pin to go through the slots right there but like I said it's just barely tight and you'll notice when you take yours off that it's just going to be barely tight on there <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get a cotter pin in here I'm using a 5 32nd by inch and a half cotter pin and we're just going to go right in there this thing fits nice and snug and it's a little bit heavier than the one that was originally in there but I wanted something a little bit a little bit heavier so I'm gonna go ahead and just bend that over and then uh, we'll be able to move on to putting our dust cap on okay so we're just gonna gently tap this into place and I'm going to put a light dab of grease around this right here so it'll just slide in there a little easier. So just gently tap it in so you don't damage it. And I just use the handle of my mallet just to tap that in there. It's not a big deal. Okay, I've just took the time to pull these slides out and grease them really well because I was about to start having problems with these. They were just really dry. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this back on. I'm going to use a little Loctite with those big bolts, and this is going to get uh, 166 foot-pounds, they call for. And the uh, main thing is to get it really tight. Okay, so we're just, like I said, getting the bracket back on first, getting our really big bolts in here. And we're going to tighten these up, get these torqued down to 166. And like I said, I'm putting a little bit of Loctite on here. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get our caliper back down here into place. Okay, and uh, make sure to put you a little slide grease on where your um, your shoes are going to be sitting there. Um, if you hadn't pushed this back, push it back a little bit so you don't have trouble getting it back on. <clears throat> so we're just getting ready to have to push those pins back in a little bit and just get it set back on here. Okay, I put some Loctite on your uh, caliper slide bolts here. I'm just getting ready to put these two back into place. I just went 35 foot-pounds on these caliper pins, and you just get your little flats so it doesn't spin on you there. And uh, <clears throat> now that we got that snugged, uh, we'll go ahead and work on getting this uh, wheel back on here. Okay, so we just got the wheel back on. I'm just getting ready to lower it and uh, finish tightening the lugs on this. And last 
lastly, we're just popping our cover back on here. And you can just give it a swift kick with your foot and that'll usually do it. So, uh, we're all finished up here and uh, like I said, it's not too bad. Um, I spent uh, more time fighting with my slides than anything because uh, they didn't have any grease in them. So I uh, got those working a little better. <clears throat> but um, said, hopefully that's been helpful, and I uh, thank y'all for watching.